Unit 59, Talking About the Past. Speaking and Listening. Introduction. Come in, Mr. Um, <clears throat> Taylor. Thank you. Call me Max. Sorry? Call me Max. All my friends call me Max. Oh, I see. So, um, <clears throat> Max, you're interested in the job of computer assistant here at Sunshine Travel. Yes. I saw your advertisement and I thought, that's the job for me. Really? Yes. You see, I like the name of your company, Sunshine Travel. It's a very happy, optimistic name. Yes. Tell me about yourself. Well, I did a degree in computer studies. Then I worked for a bank for three years. At the moment, I'm working for the BBC. Oh. Well, Sunshine Travel is a travel agency. What do you know about the travel business? The travel business? Uh, well, I lived on a desert island for six months. You lived on a desert island for six months? Yes. Uh, when was that? About two years ago. I was writing a novel. You were writing a novel? Yes, and I needed a quiet place to work, so I went to a desert island. I see. What was the novel called? It was called Living in the Past. Did you finish it? No. After six months, it was still a short story, and it was terrible. I decided I was a terrible writer, so I came back to London and got another job in computers with the BBC. Uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation? No, the British Bicycle Company. Oh. In the past. Listen. We went to the cinema last night. What did you see? We saw a western. What was it called? It was called A Man With No Name. Was it good? Yes, it was quite exciting. I enjoyed it. What did Samantha think of it? She didn't like it very much. Really? In fact, she left after five minutes. Why? I'm not sure. She didn't say. Listen and repeat. We went to the cinema last night. We saw a western. It was quite exciting. I enjoyed it. Listen and answer. The last time you went to the cinema, which film did you see? Was it a western? Listen. The film's already started. What? The film has already started. Yes, never mind. I've seen it before. That man has just arrived in town. Bartender? Yeah? Same again. <laughs> Haven't seen you in town before. The bartender hasn't seen him in town before. Thank you, Brian. Just arrived from Tulsa. He's just arrived from Tulsa. Thank you, Brian. I'm looking for you. Step into the street. You're making a big mistake. No, your time has come. So pick up your gun and let's go. It's a good film, isn't it? Do you think so? Yes, I've seen it six times. Earlier in the past. Listen. We went to the cinema last night. Did you have a good evening? Not really. We left home late. What was the problem? Brian had lost the car keys. When we arrived at the cinema, the film had already started. What kind of film was it? A western, called A Man With No Name. Was it good? Well, Brian thought it was a marvelous film. He'd seen it before. 
In fact, he'd already seen it six times. What did you think of it? I thought it was boring. I left after five minutes. Listen and repeat. We left home late. Brian had lost the car keys. When we arrived at the cinema, the film had already started. Brian thought it was a marvellous film. He'd seen it before. Listen. I saw Norman yesterday. How was he? Not very happy. Why? He had just failed his driving test. I saw Mary last week. How was she? Depressed. Why? She just lost her job. I saw Samantha on Friday. How was she? Fine. Very happy, actually. Why? She just passed an exam. I saw Brian at the weekend. How was he? Fine. He was wearing a cowboy hat. Why? He'd just seen a man with no name for the seventh time. <laughs> <laughs> Hopes and intentions. Listen. Hello, Brian. Hi. I like the cowboy hat. Thanks. I saw your favourite film last night. Sorry? I saw your favourite film last night. A man with no name? Yes. How many times have you seen it? Seven? Yes, seven times. I'd intended to see it again this week, but Samantha didn't want to come with me. I don't know why. Anyway, I didn't see it again, but I bought this hat. Mm, it's very interesting. Green is an unusual colour for a cowboy hat. Yes, I'd hoped to get a white one, but I couldn't find one anywhere. Never mind. Bartender, same again. <laughs> Song. A man with no name. I was standing at the bar in a cheap saloon in Phoenix, Arizona. I'd just arrived that afternoon from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'd had a couple of beers and I was feeling okay, nine on a scale from one to ten. I'd been on the trail for 14 days. The bartender looked at my glass and I said, same again. A man came in through the open door and I knew I was in danger. I thought we'd met somewhere before, he didn't seem like a stranger. He looked at me across the room, his eyes were hard and as cold as stone. It was quiet in the heat of the afternoon. Everybody else had disappeared and I was all alone. He said I'm looking for you. Back to the bar from the dusty street while well, they carried the stranger away. Nothing made sense in the summer heat. I had my gun in my hand and I had killed a man with no name. Accents of English. This speaker is from the south of the United States. Listen. The sergeant was talking to his men, and he passed out all the weapons, didn't have enough guns to go around. So he told the last man, I'll just give you a stick. And the guy says, well, what am I going to do with a stick? Well, you can just, just holler bang, bang. Nobody will have another difference. You'll probably get killed anyway. 
guy says, wait a minute. What happens if I get in close hand-to-hand combat? He says, I'll give you this straw and put it on the end of the broomstick, and you can just go stab, stab. Well, okay, I can go along with that. Well, the battle starts, and people are getting shot all over the place, and this guy's going bang, 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 bang. People falling down all over the place. Well, the guy's really feeling good. He's getting to be a hero. They're down to two men on the field, this one guy and the enemy. And the guy comes over there to him, calling bang, 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 bang. And the guy keeps coming. He finally gets there close enough to him. He goes, stab, 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 stab. Nothing happens. The guy just walks right on his face, just walks right on over him. As he's laying there, he's feeling bad because one minute he's a hero, next minute he's dead. And as he's laying there, he hears a guy going, tank, 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 tank. Synopsis. Dialogue. Well, Angela, I think I've found your new assistant. Oh, good. A young man called Max Taylor. A very interesting young man, in fact. Really? Yes. He did a degree in computer studies and then got a job with a bank. After he'd worked there for three years, he left everything and went to live on a desert island. Very interesting. Yes. Yes, he wanted to write a novel. A novel? Yes. How long did he stay on the desert island? Six months. And did he write his novel? Uh, No. After six months, he'd only written ten pages, uh, so he came back to London and got a job with the BBC. The British Broadcasting Corporation? Uh, No. The British Banana Company? No. The British Bicycle Company. Oh. Yes, he's a very interesting young man. I think you'll like him. Perhaps he'll put me in his next novel. Yes, who knows? <laughs> Actually, I've always wanted to write a novel myself. About your experiences in the travel business? Yes. Good idea. No. No, I think I've left it too late. I'm 52 years old. Shakespeare had already written Richard III when he was 28. Richard III isn't a novel. Do I know Richard III isn't a novel? But you know what I mean. Well, when Charles Dickens was 26, he'd already written Oliver Twist. When F. Scott Fitzgerald was 24, he'd already written his first novel and a collection of short stories. And when Mozart was eight, he'd already written his first symphony. Yes. Depressing, isn't it? (laughs) More coffee? Yes, please. 